Okay, so we're going to get to your questions. How about that? But See, this is what happens. Watching this argue more. When the boss is gone, this is what happens. <laughs> this is, our boss is gone. She's gone. All right, you ready? Good God. Would you say a question? Okay. Not that one. It's really hard. Ah. We should do that one later. Okay. All right. Theo, former student, hates his teeth being brushed and runs away as soon as he sees toothpaste. How can I get him to be okay with brushing his teeth? All right, Jen, it's a great question. Sparky, go. <laughs> <He's stuck. laughs> um, all right, so teeth brushing. So I can tell you this. So he's already had his teeth brushed before. That's something he used to be comfortable with, but we did have to do a few things to make his job a little bit easier, especially to help him open the mouth and want to have his teeth brushed. Want to have his teeth brushed? If you put toothpaste on it, he does. Oh, but that's true. Toothpaste to give you an idea, helps. Toothpaste is under Not your human toothpaste. Doggy. There's a lot of things in human toothpaste that's toxic to dogs. You need Apparently a doggy to one. us, too. <laughs> but anyway, that's another topic. Don't, don't go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Just don't. Stop. So you can put a little bit of doggy toothpaste on it. It actually doesn't have any plaque-producing <coughs> ability. All it does is it's like a treat on the toothbrush that makes it more comfortable. And if you have a real opposition to the toothbrush being in his mouth, just let him lick it off the toothbrush a few times in a row and let that be it and then sneak in like a dee -dee. Oh, like oh yeah when he licks he's like, boop, boop, like a little tappy tap yep and then that's it and then as you do it more and more every day and you do technically want to brush your dog's teeth five to seven days a week then he'll get more and more comfortable with it yep. and you want to that's the big thing wait you sped over that the big thing that we see with grooming which is the biggest mistake oh, everyone rushes it that the biggest yeah. mistake everybody makes, and I know it sucks, I'm well aware, but I'm not the one wanting to brush my dog's teeth, you are. So, you gotta do it almost every day, three to five minutes. People tell me their dog hates the Dremel, that's because you only pull it out once or twice every month or two months, and the dog is miserable. Instead of at the end of a walk, you spend two to three minutes desensitizing the Dremel mm -hmm. almost every day for months, not weeks. We're talking months. It's got to be like a part of your routine. I mean, I, I have to put some stuff on my little dog Happy's teeth. Um, she's older and she never was comfortable with brushing, so I gave up, I'll be honest. Um, but even when I tried to brush again, she's too old. It was a whole thing. So she has to have like a gel put on her teeth. And so it's a routine. I do her gel, I wash my hands, I brush my teeth. That's our night, it's like part of my night routine, night ritual. So my point is just that you've gotta do it almost every day in order to truly see some improvement for a big chunk of time. Okay, go ahead, continue. And if you're lazy about it, like I was and still am, you pay about $1,500 to $2,000 a year to get your dog's teeth done professionally, twice a year. But twice a year. Oh, well, it's because she's so old. And oh. I never did anything when she was younger. So oh. now I do it extra. Because you do it I twice a year. I have to. I, I, but there, we will, I must say there's risk because putting an older dog under anesthesia mm -hmm. is always a risk. Yep. It's a risk that I take as well. I'm not picking on Sparky. I do the same thing. But Best thing though, brush your dog's teeth. Get into the routine now. Don't be lazy like me. <laughs> um, okay. Kimberly brushes her dog's teeth like every night. It's amazing. Yeah. The consistency. It's got to be part of the routine. One more thing I wanted to say, uh, you know, he was right about the toothpaste and all, all that thing. I would also have like your treat bag on the table to draw focus. And so you do like two swipes. Good. Pick up a tiny, tiny, tiny treat. Give him a treat. Then you, you got your toothpaste, a couple swipes. Good, you're creating a marker associated with the treat bag on the table to help draw focus and it builds tolerance over time. And if you want more help on this one, go to YouTube and look up teeth brushing counter conditioning. Whoa, okay, cool. Next is Ryan Hurley. That is a cool, well, cool way to spell Ryan. My brother spells it R-I-A-N, which is also cool. This is R-Y-O-N, all cool things. Okay, anyway. Hi, I just got a, don't look at me like that. Hi, I just got a brand new puppy from the Humane Society who broke her paw mm -hmm. jumping out of the worker's hands. <sighs> She's better. I'm, I'm, oh, okay. She's better now. Uh, three Partial months old. Judgment thing. I know. I just okay. It, it takes so much for a dog to break their paw. Is it like tiny? Okay. I live on the second floor of an apartment. My puppy does want to go outside. Um, 
or back inside, but enjoys being outside. Okay, good. She freezes when we start heading towards the door. Ha, ha, ha. Because she's telling you she wants to have more fun, dude. All right. Uh, she also doesn't respond to treats very much. How can I fix this? I feel like I'm overdoing it with her and how young she is. And I don't want to create bad habits by having to carry her inside and outside. Thank you. I appreciate it. Did I read this wrong? Uh, think, she does want to go outside. I think it means doesn't. Back inside. Doesn't want to go back inside. Like that's doesn't. If she puts on the brakes, unless she is freezing unless, when she's going back inside, so she probably wants to stay outside for more. But then it said carry her inside and outside. Okay, either way, she's putting... It doesn't matter. She's putting the brakes on. It doesn't really matter how it's written. <laughs> We're going to give you the answer. It's going to be yeah, the same Yeah, inside both. or outside or both because mm -hmm. she just doesn't want to listen to you. Um, she doesn't want to go outside because she doesn't want to leave the comforts of her home. And then she goes outside. She has so much fun. She doesn't want to go in. Either way, it is the same answer. First thing I would do is... Uh, Ryan, we don't have the breed of the puppy. That is very unfortunate, but it's okay. So <laughs> I'm picking on, pick it on Ryan. <laughs> so I would say, first of all, one meal a day needs to be hand fed. You don't have to do anything crazy amazing. I want you to just say, puppy's name, come, have, if it's kibble, have like a few pieces of kibble in your hand, good. Then walk a few steps. Puppy's name, come, and she might be following you around beautifully. I hope it's boring and she is following you around. Then put a few pieces of kibble on the ground, let her eat it up, creep away ninja-like, and when she eats the last piece, puppy's name, come, yay, good job, look, more food. And just keep repeating that over and over again, and that will transition into her being able to take more high-value treats outside. You might just have a picky puppy. Sometimes people tell me their dog doesn't like treats, and I find out they're doing some dehydrated chicken, which is the lamest thing ever. So you might need to play around with some treats. I like to use freeze-dried. It's like crack for puppies, usually. Um, so you get like some lamb or beef or something, those little freeze-dried patties, and they only get a tiny, tiny piece. A little shred. Yeah, because they're really, really rich. So they'll cause diarrhea. Do dogs actually chew their, chew their treats, or do they? They swallow, swallow them. Yeah. So just a taste. You can give a big piece. They're going to swallow it either way, usually. But I'm going to be honest. If you don't care about food drive, then, then don't even worry about what I mentioned with the, the hand feeding. But if you want to build some focus, build some food drive, that's the way to do it. You guys got to start using your meals with your puppies and hand feed them. Not make them sit and wait and stay. Put a bowl down. Release them. And you think that that's training. Which is good for a dog that has super high drive that you're trying to slow down. Your dog has lower drive. You're trying to speed them up a little bit. You're trying to get them to want to come back in or go back out so you're trying to build drive towards a certain task rather than bring down drive for a task yeah but even just having dogs like just reality check guys having dogs sit for a food bowl and then they eat up all the food bowl you're not doing much training i'm sorry i'm sorry but that's like day one of training is wait for a food bowl it's it's so bare minimum we do that for eight week old puppies so if yeah exactly so if you think that that's creating some sort of amazing focus or impulse control it's like the bare bones minimum there's a lot to a lot of ways up to go from there so just keep that in mind i'm not trying to be mean but so how can we correlate what she said to your question where does that come in so you've done the food work for a week or two feeding for one meal every single day and now when you take your puppy outside no more caring stop carrying them put them on the ground let them walk and when they put on those brakes you keep a little bit of tension on that leash you go low almost parallel to their body yeah the so leash we got a maltese should look like this yeah not maltese is down here and i'm up here putting pressure so bend that's over. an anchor you need to come parallel to their head their body put a little bit of leaf pressure going this way and in my other hand as a piece of food and the minute they smell the food and show interest take one small step release that leash pressure lure them with the food give them to go a couple steps good treat and see if that unlocks their brain you may only make it a couple steps and then do it again yes. do it again do it again the moment they take that one step release. forward your leash better release or your puppy thinks that you don't know what you're doing yep. and you're pulling and, and they become more resistant so that's one way to do it that might not work i'll be honest that's called an opposition reflex yeah the the opposing but uh another thing you could do is honestly switch directions like when your puppy puts on the brain and the food isn't working do like a turn like go back the other way and turn back around um, I would so much as I, I would try all the things so the one thing might be squatting down and going come on puppy good girl let's go and really bending down 
if the puppy looks at me like I'm stupid, then I'm like, okay. So I stand back up straight. I become in charge person. I walk the other direction. Let's go. And I might even scoot that little puppy a bit. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to drag the puppy, but I might scoot those little feet. One or bit. two feet, not a big deal. Five or six feet, yeah, maybe you're going to end up on a website. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, those are just some options for you. Good luck, Ryan. Keep us posted. Um, Morgana! Who? Morgana. Oh, up here. I crate my puppy at night, but we do take naps together. Is that bad? I don't know. Well, I don't know. How's your puppy act? Yeah. Is your puppy a bad puppy or a good puppy? If your puppy is doing good throughout the day and how, respecting your boundaries. How could you say that? Don't you know there are no bad dogs? How could you say that? Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a topic for another time. Yeah, it's um, a whole hour right there. <laughs> I want a podcast for that. But seriously, like, are you are you happy with your puppy's behavior? If you're not having any issues, if they can be alone during the day as well as at night, then keep doing what you're doing. I think we both would safely say to just keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're not doing daytime crating, maybe try a couple hours of that too. See if there's separation anxiety. Because at some point, you're going to need to leave. Crate mm -hmm. that puppy and leave. Yeah. So it's better to do it when you're there to condition and be comfortable in there during the daytime rather yep. than when you leave and then the association is negative because you're leaving when putting them in the crate. There's a, or, or protected playpen, whatever you got going on. There's a huge misconception that you only practice, you know, crating your puppy during the day when you leave. If you do that, your puppy is going to freak out because it's not conditioned on a daily basis. It's associating you leaving with being crated, therefore it's negative. Yep. And the whole thing is just negative anyway. They're social animals. So mm -hmm. when we get in a dog or puppy, they're not in the backyard anymore where they're just left to their own devices or in a giant pen in the backyard. They're in our homes with us. So we have to condition them very quickly how to be alone. Rubia says, uh, this is a TikToker from last week. My crate is attached to playpen. I have not kept it closed at night, should I? Again, it's, it's the same thing, Rubia. You know, are you having any issues with your dog? Is your dog going to outgrow that playpen or climb over it at some point? And then you've never practiced shutting the crate door. If not, if it's going to stay small and happy in that little playpen. By the way, we're talking smalls in like a three pound Maltese. We're not talking <sighs> like that, but... a 10 pound dog. I yeah. mean, I've seen so many 10 pound dogs, dogs can get out. play pens oh, yeah. like you can't believe. Or, or so. they'll jump on the crate and yeah. then jump out. That's a big one. I went to a house and the woman, it's a poor woman, she got three puppies, all litter mates, and she has triple litter mate syndrome. Already, she had already researched it, thank God. And I go there and I'm working with one and when I take one out of the playpen, the other one would jump out, the other one would jump out. And I'd put one in, the other one would jump out. Put one <laughs> it was like whack-a-mole, but with puppies jumping out of the playpen, I mean, it was... It's bad. That's yeah. Horrible. So, so basically, it really just depends. We suggest shutting the door at some point and practicing that. But if you have zero potty issues and it's a very small dog that's not going to be able to climb out, then you're probably fine. If, and, and you're happy with the dog, the puppy's behavior, you're probably fine. Chad says, how do I correct separation anxiety? I need help SOS. Chad, I don't know how old your puppy is, but if your puppy is under six months old, you need to check out thepuppyacademy.com and check out our online school. We go over preventing separation anxiety, what causes separation anxiety, and the beginning stages of working through it. The beginning stages of working through it. And when you read like the preventative measures, it also helps you learn, you know, what to do on the other side of it. And then we also help you build all of those impulse control. Mm -hmm. commands to feed into separation anxiety yeah. just know it's it's a rabbit hole so yeah. instead of spending a lot of time researching it and finding 400 different things look for a program like ours or someone else's and commit to following that program and don't deviate from that information just stick with one thing and follow it through because there's dozens of ways of working through separation anxiety and they do not all coincide yeah. they actually probably like battle each other yeah. if anything the quickest version just to give you something to do tonight and tomorrow until you can kind of figure out how to get some one-on-one -on -one help or try an online program like ours is uh the crate is only big enough for your puppy to stand up lay down stretch um and and do a turn it is covered you are doing two things you're playing a white noise machine that or a really loud humidifier or fan and you're playing some sort of talkative music not soft jazz but like 
like there's talk radio where people are talking. It's it's more upbeat, drowns out outside sounds. You can also play uh, a sitcom. Those are really good too. Um, these types of sitcoms like Friends or you know Everybody Loves Raymond. There's a lot of people talking constantly, so that can help along with the white noise machine. It needs to be dark, crate covered. Uh, don't hold and coddle your puppy for a couple of weeks. You're a food machine. That puppy comes out of crate, you train them for food, show them what to do, how to live their life, they go back in crate. There's no resting or snuggling outside of crate for two weeks. That's, she's trying to be nice about it, but that's probably the most important thing you could yeah. do. And also one more thing is do not crate your puppy first overnight. Do some daytime crating first yeah. because at least if that puppy does cry, scream, bark, whine, whatever it's going to be, it's probably going to be bad from what I'm reading at least, then that means you're not going to take them out of crate. You're going to let them work through it for the couple hours that they're in yeah. there. But if you do that overnight, I think I, I think we, we can all say comfortably that we're going to pull those puppies out of the crate yeah. because we can't sleep. So do it when you don't need to sleep and they can stay in there a bit longer. And uh, lastly, it's kind of expensive, but with some puppies that don't chew, that don't have chewing issues, try to get, I always forget what they're called. The little, Snuggle puppy. Sn is that what they're called? Snuggle puppy. Snuggle puppy. They come with a little heating pad and a heartbeat. It's a whole thing. It sounds ridiculous, but it really is a game changer for some, not all. I think but for the some, younger puppies mainly. For the younger puppies. We don't have age, but okay. Anyway. We're going to assume like 8 to 12 weeks old, snuggle puppy, because yeah. they're still barely getting in that chewing phase. Yeah. And then... Brenda says, by what age do uh, do I start to control their bladder? My eight week old always has to pee. I thought you were gonna be on top of these questions. So oh, you want me to read those? What age to control bladder, eight week old, always has to pee. Um, so they don't have they don't have receptors from their brain to their body leaf functions till they're around five, six months old. Mm -hmm. So your only job right now is to create habit, a schedule that they can depend on, and then prevent the peeing on the opposite side of things. So what age? Uh, we don't really know, honestly. No, no, I'm saying what age does, do, do they develop it? Every dog's different. I got dogs that are nine weeks old that hold their bladder for three, four hours, and it's really easy to get them on a schedule, but the schedule is the most important part, but that is the anomaly. That is not the yeah. most common thing. She wanted me to say that because no one's, not many people are gonna have that. It's like the unicorn. That's like dogs, puppies with a hardcore genetic circadian rhythm. That's what it's called, right? Because cicada is a bug. Circadian rhythm, whatever. The whole night you know thing, the whole night thing versus the day thing, uh, where the night hits and they pass out till they see daylight again. That is not the average. <laughs> that is just nighttime. <laughs> the lucky <But> one. <laughs> best thing, get on a schedule. You can DM us, we'll send you a schedule. Or I don't know if we're still doing that. Yes, do you, if you, well, I don't know if we're Brenda. still doing that because Ricky's going to be gone for a while. Oh, well. So she probably won't. But um, have, reach out to us. We will find some resource for you, whether it's something that's already But it's got to be on Instagram. Yeah, Sorry, TikTok. It has to be on Instagram. And then basically what you're doing is you're putting the puppy in the crate, and then every hour, hour and a half, two hours, depending on age and how long they can hold it for you, take them out, take them out to go potty. Yep. And the sphincters that hold in the urine are still strengthening. They don't have that ability yet. So if you open your crate door, come on, puppy, woo! They're probably going to pee right then and there. So they might open, do it anyway. <laughs> they might do it anyway. Just literally open the door, make them wait for a second, close the door if they're rushing out, make them wait, release them, pick them up, take them outside. We have if a ton. A, if it's a big puppy, leash them and get them out there. If it's a little puppy, eight weeks old, peeing all the time, then you probably want to pick them up. But the biggest thing I'm going to say, I know, waiting for those, ready for the oomph behind it. <sighs> If you give your puppy a lot of water, it doesn't matter oh, what yeah. you do. You're the water guy. Are, I was waiting for happen. you to say oh, that. Building up to Leading it. up to it. That's when you're going to get accidents. So uh, the standard measurement, like national standard measurement, is a half cup of water per 30 pounds of body weight every two to three hours. Some breeds are different, like uh, Dalmatians. They need a free drink because they have a lot of kidney issues. So some breeds uh, are like that, but I mean, I've Most always, of I know are. like two breeds out of yeah. the hundreds that yeah. require that. and very likely your dog is not one of those breeds. And if you're still struggling, uh, come back to us next week or you can check out our online school because we live in potty training world in our online school. Yep. Zine says, what do I do if my dog doesn't trade and is almost as tall as me when standing? I'm guessing for the toy? Uh, yeah, I'm guessing you mean drop it. Um, we don't trade. We don't trade. We teach them to let things go. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. So Damn, had, some you guys hard. had some she's attitude. Had some attitude behind you. that one. Zine, she's sassy. <laughs> or Z, Zine or Z. 
Uh, Zim, Zim, I don't know. But uh, we, are, we don't know how old your dog is, but I would, you know, go look at some videos on how to teach Drop It. And the ones where the, the trainers hold the toy and then the dog learns to drop it that way, that's the route you wanna go. And then practice with other things, like uh, like dropping something randomly on the floor. Kitchen they, towel. Yeah, kitchen towel, they pick it up. Don't be mad because they have so much fun with that. Just be like, dog, come, sit, good. You know, you can do uh, food work with that, but you have to practice. If you only do it when it happens organically, you're gonna continue to be mad about it. So you gotta practice it like once or twice a week, throw some things around, have food on you, and you know, let put it in front of their sniffer. And when they drop it, good, you know, give them a piece of food. That way, it's not so conflict driven where you're reacting all the time. Okay, and then just in the meantime, you're building your stronger drop it. Asher, yeah, Asher is a bit stubborn, he always follows us. Me and my family think it's just because we picked him up yesterday in Ohio. Do you have any tips for stubborn dogs? What I don't understand. Uh, you just picked him us? up yesterday. Stubborn. So dogs. picking. So a dog that follows you. That's that's not stubbornness. That's either loyalty or <laughs> separation anxiety. And you haven't had this dog long enough for him to be loyal. So it's probably separation anxiety. Um, we do like to teach they're, the follower they're mentality. They're supposed to follow you. Yeah. They're puppies. We do teach the follower mentality uh, usually through training. But if your puppy's following, that's that's pretty normal. Most Harness puppies Harness that. Yeah. And then teach place to teach them how to target something for food rewards. And so you're also teaching them when not to follow you. It's a combination of body language with a barrier. A cots are easier for dogs to learn on than dog beds. Long term, they tend to like dog beds better, but it kind of depends on the, on the dog. I had a client yesterday that it was our second session together. The first session, this dog sat and barked at me for 30 straight minutes on leash. And we found the While you the worked him? Well, yeah. You, yeah. You're just, here, see, here's the thing. Puppies don't take food. Puppies bark at us. We still work them. Yep. We still work them. <laughs> we do our very best. Today, on the second session that I had yesterday, so this woman has had this dog for about two weeks and this dog follows her like she is the second cubby. That's how, that's how on this dog is. And whenever the, do the woman spaces herself from the dog, that's when she gets barking. So even that isn't stubbornness, that's separation anxiety, pretty clear separation anxiety. So what she just said, teaching the place, I spent 45 minutes teaching place yesterday, just literally getting the dog to go on it. And then every time it tried to get off, backing it away with a little bit of leash pressure and extended arm, getting it to settle and to sit and do this over and over and over again. And there was like a light switch went on the dog's head and eventually looked at me, looked at her, laid down and knocked out for the rest of the session. But it took Mental 40 work. straight minutes Mental of work. doing this, of reinforcing it over and over and over again before the dog was like, oh, I don't need to follow in the, like the maniacal way that it this was. This is an older dog, by the way. This is not an eight week old puppy. Yeah, no, this is actually an eight month old puppy. But yeah. I guess what I'm trying to go for is this is the future of what can happen if we don't teach the ability for the puppy to be alone as well as to follow. Yeah. Follower mentality is good for a young puppy. Yep. But as they get older, they hit 10 weeks old, 12 weeks old, 16 weeks old. I want to start building up the ability to sit calmly in an area, a targeted area like place. Place. And then get them to settle or follow, depending on what you want. You have three jobs to teach move when I move, stop when I stop, and don't follow me. That's it. Th like, Which those is are relationship building exercise come for the first one, relationship building exercise come to a sit for the second one, and then third place. is your place. Yep. And if that sounds really confusing and overwhelming, check out our online school or, or anyone, anyone's puppy program. You should, in, it should incorporate place. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's do this one and then we'll finish with the hard one. Mm -hmm. Eight month old golden doodle. I don't have a name. Uh, Okay, eight month Mendoza. old. Mendoza. No, that's not it. Uh, no. It's something okay. separate. Eight month old golden doodle. What are your thoughts on plushy toys, stuffed animals with and without squeakers? Only use squeakers if you want to build drive. Squeakers are the. I'm just gonna get right to it because we don't have a lot of time. Squeakers are the sound of animals not alive anymore. They're dying. So that's why they, you know, prompt the energy. What? It's that's how you. Why you use them? She's ki they're killing the animals. They're, that's they're what killing they are. animals, so that's why they get crazy sometimes. And then it's it's okay. You get the picture. So 
If you don't need to build she drives, was for she was here too. if you don't need to build drives, stop using squeakers. We use squeakers more to proof commands, <laughs> like place and sit and down and come. It's like squeak, squeak, throw it, still come to me. Don't chase the squirrel that's like acting like, a, yeah, okay. Anyway, you get mm -hmm. the point. But if I need to build drive, I recently had a little mini Aussie that wouldn't play. I used a squeaker. She's starting to play pretty uh, fast. Oh, an Aussie. Big surprise little there. mini Aussie, yeah. Uh, but she's always using slippers um, or seeing slippers as toys because it smells like you. That's a typical puppy thing. You just have to remove them until they develop more impulse control. Uh, toys, teach a good drop. biting blankets, other soft things with similar materials. Um, I just wouldn't leave a puppy with anything plushy. Like anything plushy shouldn't be, in our opinion, to give to a puppy to hang out with without you. It should always be interactive. And Bethany, I'm gonna say this really quick. Yeah. This isn't really a puppy anymore. This is an eight month old dog. This is Oh, that's a, right. Eight yeah. month old dog. That's you a said, no. You think it said eight week? That's a yeah. That's, I think she thought it said eight week. Yeah. Change your answer now. Eight months is a no. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. We are we are firmer. You just need to be firmer. Yeah, we're we're not cooperating with the puppy anymore. We're made to tell me exactly what we <laughs> yeah, want. Sorry. We're not reasoning. A slipper is a no. Go over, pick up the drag leash, pressure. Wait it out, you know, you're not emotional, you're not mad about it, but it's it's like, yeah. And if you are firmer. you are emotional, they're gonna run and it's a game now. Oh yeah, then it's and fun. And the drag leash is the leash that they literally wear on their flat collar or their harness, they just drag it around the yeah. house. For an eight month, I'll probably use a slip lead on, yeah. the, on the neck or something like that, but they have to be monitored while using it. And then when they pick up something, you just literally casually walk over. They're expecting you to chase, they run, step on the leash to prevent movement, pick up the leash, pressure up, arm up and out, Tell them drop, wait them out, get a hand on that toy. When they let it go, pull it away. Tell them sit, good, and then grab something else and train. But you gotta practice. Like you yeah. need to practice. It is Eric. I just saw that. This is Eric. Eric okay. does it. I told you, my dog. I don't have the color you blocking. You listen to me. I don't have the color blocking. Okay, our final one, which we have two minutes. We saved the hardest one for last. So yeah, that, the so one that's that going to be a forty-five minute answer. So that was brilliant. Um, what do you do with a three and a half month old Malty Poo who's terrified of strangers and other dogs? I would spend 30 days getting rid of any environmental factors as far as socialization goes or what you might think, Isabella, what socialization is. What I mean by that is spend a month being that whole dog's world. So the, your circle is so small. So the dog, your little puppy sees another dog and you turn food good. Sees a leaf blow by. We've got crazy winds right now that's scaring all the puppies. Wind and they're like, what is that? And you're like, puppy come, sit, good food. Work on a ton of food work in the house. Feed all, like hand feed all the meals which shouldn't take an hour. You can do like a handful of food at a time. Teach place for impulse control, waiting at front doors for permission to go out for impulse control. You need to become this puppy's whole world where they see something and you catch things early. I mean, they see a dog or a person go, oh, and they go, ah, and you immediately say dog's name and turn. You wanna change eyesight. So wherever the dog is looking, don't try to convince them to, to look at a piece of food. You need to turn them around in some way, shape or form. I would be so hardcore about that for a month and even having people come over, you just put your little puppy in playpen or crate mm -hmm. and nobody bothers them. Like they learn that their their environment is gonna stop bothering them because they your puppy's probably lost trust in stuff, mm -hmm. dogs are barking at her, people stare at her, which is rude, by the way. If it was an adult dog, it would be perceived as a fight. And so I would I would start with that. I'm not adding anything to it. Okay, cool. That's, um, your, that's your wheelhouse. Only when that gets good can you start to add in, in my opinion, some social factors, and then you wanna do it somewhere safe, like in your house. And that's honestly, that's a whole, whole nother topic. Um, but anyway, Isabella, I hope that gives you somewhere to start. Isabella, this is honestly, and I know we I sold I thought you our, said mine was enough. Just trust me. We've sold our program multiple times, but we can help you so much in our online program with this because we contribute whole an entire hour to answering questions. And one on one. And a much smaller crew one that on joins that, that online chat. Yeah. So yeah, please, please reach out. And if you, the program is pretty, pretty well priced right now, especially, so should look into it. Christmas is coming up. Maybe a family member can gift it to you. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. Same time, same place next week. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>